Okay, we are uh, writing a smaller program such that we can manage it during the class time to demonstrate the transportation simplex algorithm. Um, please write down the problem and uh, go ahead and work it out for yourself if you wish. Uh, I'm going to just put some numbers in here. Usually, the transportation problem is given in this format to you. They give you a table, it has the, all the costs in it, it has the supplies and the demands identified. So, we now have three warehouses and we have four demand centers. Supplies given, demands given. You add them up and they end up to be, what, 160? Mm -hmm. So this is a balanced transportation problem. This is a minimization problem. Um, this is a minimization problem. And as such, you would have uh, the summation of the cost, the double summation of the cost by the decision variable. So it would be uh, 5x11 plus 4x12 plus 6x13 plus 9x14 plus 8x21 plus 7x22 plus 4x3, uh, 4 x 2, 3, plus 8x24, plus last row, 3x31, plus 10x. Um, 3, 2 plus 11x, 3, 3 plus 2x, 3, 4. That's the objective function of this transportation problem given. Then you have the supply constraints which would set the total that can be sent out of this supply center is equal 70. So we would have those set of constraints which says x11 plus x12 plus x13 plus x14 equals 70. And we would write 1 for the second one, which would be x. 2, 1 plus x, 2, 2 plus x, 2, 3 plus x, 2, 4 equals 40. And x, 3, 1 plus x, 3, 2 plus x, 3, 3 plus x, 3, 4 equals 50. So we abide by the rules set for us, which says, you can only send 70 units from this center. And we are saying that everything that is sent out of this center is equal 70. For the second one and for the third one, we will do the same thing. And then we go for the demand constraints. We will go for the demand constraints, and these demand constraints are these sets that we need to satisfy. 
the demand center one will get at most 30. That's what we will have for this demand center. So the demand constraints, and I will just write one of them, and then you can write in your notes the rest of them too. So it would be everything that is sent here. So it would be x11 plus x21 plus x31 equals 30. And the last one will be for this one, which says x14 plus x24 plus x34 equals 60. So somewhere in there you have a 45 and you have a 25. And of course you need to say all x, i, j greater than or equal to zero. And if you're writing them like this, you need to identify what i and j is. i is 1, 2, 3. j is 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the formulation. So if they, don't, they ask you to uh, write the formulation, that's what you write. And if they ask you to solve it using Lindo or LEPS or any other uh, method just as a simplex, uh, just as a regular RP, this is what you put into the uh, system and you get your answer. There are specific uh, ones for transportation, you can use those packages to use transportation problem, but these are rather simple problems and Lindo and Lips both give you the good answers very quickly. So this, this part is identifying the uh, formulation of the problem. You, so you have the formulation. The next step for you, the next step for you is uh, identifying after you have done this is for you to identify a basic feasible solution, starting basic feasible solution. And you have different ways to do that. You know at least three of them. You know at least three of them. Um, there's also a fourth one, randomly assigned values. Uh, today I feel I should use this. Because 11 is my lucky number, I'll assign my love. That's a random assignment. You can, you can do that. But anyway, um, you, you can use one of the techniques that we, that we thought, that we talked about it. Uh, Vogel takes more time. Um, minimum cost is usually the one that most people start with. It's much better than the northwest corner. So. That's what you can do. Um, however, those things are the ones that we covered in the previous session. This session, we are going to talk about the algorithm that it is used in, in this process. And to do, to, to do that, we need to show you how an iteration is done. If we show you an iteration, then you can Follow the same iteration over and over and over until you get to the optimal solution. Some of the concepts that uh, we implemented before in this algorithm also is the same thing. We are going to be checking the solution, finding the solution. For example, we will put a solution up here. We need to make sure that the solution has specific numbers of basic variables. For this case, how many basic variables we will have? Six. I will have six basic variables. I need to make sure that I have that. We need to have six basic variables. So we're checking our facts before we start. We have six basic variables. And out of six basic variables that we have, out of six basic variables that we have, 
we can find them through one of those methods, northwest corner, northwest corner, or minimum cost, or vocals. I'm going to put a set of numbers in here. And we are assuming that, in the, that we are in the middle of a process. We have done, we have started with, with something and we have gone four or five iterations. Now we are here. Okay. And as such, I'm going to assign um, 25 units in here. So this column is gone. That's 25. I'm going to assign that 25 uh, to here. So this row is gone. I have 20 units in here. Let's assign that 20 to this one. So 20 is assigned there. So this column is gone. 70, that's 50. Let's assign all that 50 here. So that is gone. This one is left with 10. Let's assign that 10 in here. So this is gone. I have 30 units, 30 units, and that 30 will go in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six basic variables, so I'm okay. Everything is balanced. 30 is here, 45 is here, 25 is here, and 60 is here. 70 is there, 40 is there, and 50 is there. So this is a feasible solution. Okay. <clears throat> So we will start with this, and it says, at some iteration of a transportation simplex algorithm, this solution is reached. And it's asking you several questions. And just leave it to you, leave it right there. What are those uh, information that we need to do? Now, this is like a tableau. What do you write under the tableau? Okay, so we say solution is, tell me what the solution is. X12 is equal 20, X14 equals 50, X21 equals 30, X24 equals 10, X32 equals 25, and X33 equals 25. Am I done? No. I need to say XIJ, okay? You need to say all other XIJs are zero. Okay. So you have a solution. You're still not done. What is the solution to a LP? When I say, what is the solution? This is not the only thing that you give. The first thing that you give is actually the value of z. You say the solution is this. They say, because what is the purpose? He said, I want to find the maximum of z. I want to find the minimum of z. And he said, what is the solution? You say, the minimum of z is th this number. Okay? So you start with this. But because we need to have those to do the calculation, this is what we want to do. And some of you who have um, good eyesight or good Multiplication capabilities will let me know that 1375. So what is the next step that you do under the, that tableau? Is it optimal? Okay. So we need to devise 
a methodology which says whether this thing is optimal or not. After you find that, then what can you say? After you do that, what is that you can say? What is that you have to say? So what is the leaving variable? What is the entering variable? What is the pivot? What is the leaving? What is the entering? And why? And then do an iteration. And those are the steps that we are going to be covering. It's a very simple process. It's a tedious, long process. But it is very easy. It's just addition and multiplication, addition and subtraction. That's all. <clears throat> And a little game that children like to play to connect dots together and draw, draw lines and boxes and all those things. So the first thing that we need to do is we will assign a UI We will assign a UI and a VJ to each cell. <clears throat> UI and VJs, actually I want to do that, UIs and VJs are, and it is very important, they are unrestricted. Why is it so long? Unrestricted. Oh, okay. <laughs> I keep writing and it's not ending. <laughs> okay. So they are unrestricted, which means they can be both positive and negative. This is as opposed to what we talked about it in simplex, because in simplex all the slack variables were always greater than or equal to zero. But the way that we controlled it was we added a slack variable, we subtracted a surplus variable. Because in this case we are not doing that, this unrestrictedness covers both of them. Whether they are going to be added or subtracted, they go into their own uh, sign. So if vj is negative 5, it means that it was really being subtracted from a, um, <clears throat> from one of those. So the, so the terminologies are similar to the, um, uh, to the slack variables that we are using in, in regular simplex, LPs and so on. So after you assign that, then you say, how is the assignment? The assignment in here is U1 and V3. So whatever that column is, that that cell is, UI and VJ will be associated with those. UIs with the rows, VJs with the columns. So for this one, for this one, we will have what? For this one, we will have U3 and V2. So every, every cell has its own associated um, UI and VJ, and they are, they are coming from this tableau. So we will start so we will start by writing the information. Wait a two seconds and then do that. Let me write that information and then take the picture. So no, 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 because 
then he has to take four or five pictures. The next one will be better to take pictures. So, so we are going to be writing that information. And that set of information that we are going to do will be associated with the basic variables. Okay. Now, think about the simplex tableau. What is the basic variable at the top? Zero. What do you see for the basic variable? All zeros. Okay. For non-basic variables, you see a number. And based on that number, you make a decision what is the entering variable and what is the leaving variable. Am I correct? Yes. Am I correct, Jeremy? Yes. Okay. Am I correct, Ms. Shah? Okay. So this is what we are going to be also doing. And we will start, and we will start with, and we will start with basic variables. For every basic variable that we have, what are our basic variables? These things. For every basic variable that we have, we would write this simple statement. For x1, 2, we would write u1 plus v2 u1 plus v2 equals its cost. Okay? Equal its cost. So it is 4. So when you write this in your notebook, you say for every basic variable, ui plus vj equals cij. That's for every basic variable. So we would write that set down. OK? And so the next one will be u1 plus v4 equals uh, 9. Next one will be uh, u2 plus v1 equals now. Many people make mistakes because they are looking at this set. And in the heat of the moment, what do they put in here? They put, the, um, they put that number in here. Be careful. If you want to do this, look at the tableau. Look at there and said x12 equal 4, x14 equal 9 x21 equal 8 is that 8 and so on that way you can check your assignments double check the assignments the 1 2 1 4 2 1 okay so next one will be x u 2 or uh, v4, uh, next one will be u3 plus v2, next one will be u3 plus v3, and that is all. The numbers are going to be u2, v4, that's, that's 8, 10, and 11. Okay. How many variables? Those are set of equations. How many variables do I have? I have 12 variables. You sure? U1, U2, U3. Oh, 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 it is six. Sorry. So how many do I have? Six. I have six. Seven. Seven. I have seven. Oh, you have four Bs in I have four Bs in. Um, three. Three. Uh, right. <laughs> seven, finally. <laughs> <laughs> 
How many equations do I have? Yeah, six equations, seven variables. Two? Six. Okay. How many variables? How many equations? Six equations, seven variables. Can I solve this? Of course you can. You, the word can is misleading. Of course you can solve it. But you do. You say, oh. This doesn't need any solution. Why not? Because I have more variables than than equations. How many solutions does this one have? In a, a lot of solutions. Why? Because you have more variables. And what do we do in regular simplex? If we have more variables, we make some of them non-basic. We assign them zero. In here, you can do the same thing. You can pick the one which is more than required. I have seven variables, six equations. So one of them I have to assign an arbitrary value. We can select as an arbitrary choice. And IE's arbitrary choice is always Go with the zero. Why? Because it makes the things easy. Now, which one of these things? So solve it and let me know what the answer is. Tell me as you are finding the numbers. I do V2 equal 4. V4 As you calculate 1, as you calculate 1, go around, see whatever they have, solve it. U1, 0, so V4 is 9. Okay, U1, we calculated V2. Any other V2, U3 is? V3 is 5. U2 is negative 1. 10 minus 4. U2. Yes. U2. U2 is negative 1. U2 is negative 1. All right, you ready? Um, okay, so that was 4. This is 6. Yeah. And uh, we have V4 calculated. Nine. We have U2. Negative one. U2 is negative 1. You're good. V1 is Ooh, look at them. Look at them. They're rolling. V1 is what? Nine. 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 Ooh, they're rolling. They're rolling. What, is, what else? What else you want? What else you want? Okay. I don't know. V5 equals? V3. V5 not up there. V5 not up there. V5 not up there. V5 not up there. Not up there. It's not even in the But it's down here. V3. It's not up there. It's down here. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Okay. What is left? V3. V3 equals? V5. Five. So U1, U2, U3, calculated, V1, V2, V3, and V4 calculated. Now, I wrote this because I wanted to show you how to start. And just don't try to go back and forth. But this way of writing is not a correct way of writing. Okay. When you, do, when you want to do this, um, now have the numbers and tell me, this is what you write. You say U1, U2, U3, V1, V2, V3, V4, okay? And the numbers in order such that when you need them, you can easily refer to them. So what is U1? Zero. Zero, U2 was? Negative one. Negative one, U3? Six. Six, V1? Nine. 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 V2? Four. Four. Five. V3? Five. five. Nine. Nine, V4, nine. Okay, so this is the first step. Has anything to do with 
what I want to do? Yes. In a moment it will be clear. Now, after I have calculated this, so you know that there are different people that they may come up with the different numbers. Why? Because they is they are assigning something different. They select a different one, they assign something different, uh, so. So those are the values that I have calculated. How did I calculate them? I assigned, I looked at my basic variables and for every basic variable I, I assigned it's ui plus vj to be equal to the cost. These are my basic variables. Now, if the problem is not optimal, one of the non-basic variables, these are the calculation type for the zero in the tableau sense. So for non-basic variables, I need to calculate actually this statement. And that statement is ui plus vj minus cij. for non-basic variables. For all non-basic variables, I need to calculate this. How many non-basic variables do I have there? Six. I have M plus N minus this number. I have M times N minus this. You shouldn't memorize this, but it is M N minus M plus N minus one. These were the basic ones. These are all of them. And for those of you who are picky and you would do that. For those of you that you're really, really picky, we'll put that in the center. You said that's what the, um, the this is the non number of non basic the, the holes that don't have a number assigned to them. There are m rows, n columns, so there's m times n variables. <clears throat> and this set were the basic ones, so if you subtract them, that's what you get. Well, we don't worry about them. We just look at that and anywhere that has no number uh, recorded in it, that's a non-basic variable. So we are going to do the calculation. How many holes do I need to calculate? Whatever is remaining. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 6. Is 6 more? What did I do to you? Are you looking at me like that? Yes. Okay, so we're calculating for the zero, you said? Because if they're non basic, they're zero, aren't they? xij is zero, and that's what this one is. There is no value in here, so x11 is zero. But when you look at the tableau, when you look at the tableau, what do you have in the zero for non-basic variables? You have numbers. Right, so we're calculating for the zero. Those, yes, okay. those numbers. These would represent those numbers, and we will use, this, we will use the same analogy to make our decision based on that. This is a minimization problem. So what is that we are looking for? For the entering variable. Oh, 
minimization problem? Almost positive. So if you have a positive number, it means, it means what? This solution is not optimal. Okay, so we are going to calculate this, and I'm going to write them in a different color such that you won't... Um, and I will be using this space somewhere in here, but you write them underneath this. So we are going to calculate U1 plus V1 minus C11. Why? Because this is a non-basic. This is among all those which says they are zero. So I will calculate that. What is that value? I'll go back in here and look at this. That's what I say when you write them organized, it's easy to refer to them. So it's U1 plus V1, that's zero plus 9 minus C11, which is 5. That is going to be 4. OK? A little light bulb should come up and says, ah, bling, this problem is not, this solution is not optimal. Why? Because if I enter x11 into the basis, if I enter x11 into the basis, it will improve z. Of course, I made sure that this happens by assigning these large numbers, large costs, values. Know a couple of things. Okay, so the next one will be this one. Should I select that one? No, no that's a basic variable, nothing in here. So we are going to be doing that one, which is U1 plus V3 minus C13. And that value is going to be what? U1, 0. U1, 0. V3, 5. So 0 plus 5 minus C1, 3, which is 6. And that's going to be negative 1. Okay, that's not going to help us at all because this is a good number. That's not entering, okay, because it's negative. Remember, this is minimization. You're looking at the zero and you need to make, to pick the most positive number. Okay, so from here we are going to assign. The first column back there, after they finish their fixing, whatever they are fixing, do this one. The second column, please do this one. Third column, please do this one. And the fourth column, please do this one. Which one? That's three, one. Three, one? You got 12? Yeah. Okay. So we have a candidate of 12 for here. X2, three, three is a candidate for this is what? Zero. I'm sorry. Zero. Zero. Okay. X2, two, two is Negative? Negative four. Negative four. Okay. So these are the candidates. Anybody? Relax, relax, relax. 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 Rel
13? 13. Okay. What, what, what else? These two? Nobody wants to do these two. I have done them myself. That's four. That's four. And that is uh, minus one. Minus one. You don't write them in here. I just want to. Anybody has any objections? Now we have those numbers and we are making a decision. Minimization problem. These are equivalent to the zero values. So you go with the most positive number. Where is the most positive number among all those? Is that this one? That looks like the one. Because you should guess that that's, that has the lowest cost. So this is probably a very, very good choice. Okay. And especially in this row, you are looking at the numbers being assigned are very large. Um, so we are going to go with that choice. Please make sure that in your notes you would write all these steps for calculating these values. Okay. So we will select that, and as we select that, we will put a asterisk in here. We will put an asterisk in here, and we would say, okay, this is going to be my entering variable. So this is going to become basic. So this is my entering variable. So where do I get my entering variable? From this set of calculations. Where did that get to use? From this set of calculations. U's and V's are calculated here, are plugged back in here. We will find the most positive value and we will select it as entering variable. So what do we need to now to identify? Our leaving variable. The leaving variable is a fun game. Finding the leaving variable is really a fun game. You will try just like the, the kids. You will try to start from here, go up, left, right, down, never diagonal, and connect to the boxes that have basic variables assigned to them. You can jump over one and connect to the other, but you cannot go diagonal. Okay. You will find, you can say that for yourself, but there's only one. Okay, there's only one raft. You have to start from here and come back to here. By going only through the, by going only through the places that have assigned basic variables. Now, you don't have to go through every one of them. I'll go from here to here. Where would I go then? 20? Then I can come back here. I don't have to go through this. I can go directly to this. No, we don't have to hit them all. You, you go with the minimum number. That way everything else is taken care of. Okay. So if you have to go here and here, you just go directly from here to there. So this 
is going to be the loop. This is called the loop. The reason that we select the loop is because we want to know how much we can increase that value. Remember the concept of mean ratio? Mean ratio was to let you know how much you can increase that variable. In this case, that's what we are doing. But if I'm going just out of nowhere and I say, well, let's raise this to 5, let's raise it to 7, let's raise it to 9, let's raise it to... There is no way for me to just go trial and error. However, when you select a loop, you can know exactly how much you can increase without changing the balance. Because remember, this solution is balanced now. It satisfies these constraints. You don't want to lose that. And this is, what, this is how you start. You start assigning pluses and minuses. OK? What do I want to do with this? I want to increase it. So I'll start. Yeah, but I mean, sometimes, sometimes you have to go up, left, down, right, down, left, up, right, down. Strange things. And all of them happen in the test. <laughs> <laughs> all easy ones happens where? In a class. In a class. <laughs> so we start, we want to increase that. What is that? X3, 4. We want to increase X3, 4. Well, how much is X3, 4 right now? Is there X3, 4 in here? So it's all zero. Right now it's zero. It's a non-basic. We want to increase that. Okay? So our intention is to increase that. Then you go around the loop. This way, that way, doesn't make any difference. You go up, plus, minus. Plus, minus. Alternate between pluses and minuses. What is the concept? If I'm going to increase here, if I'm going to increase here, I will be looking at that number. If I'm increasing that, something needs to come down from this other numbers which are here. That's why this is a dead end. Because I increase or decrease this, there is nothing else to balance it. So I'm increasing that, decreasing that, increasing that, decreasing that. I'm increasing something. There's a problem? Not at all. I'm decreasing something. Is a problem? Yeah. You can't decrease below zero. So you look at these, everything that has a minus sign next to it. And you say 50 and 25. How much can I decrease before I hit zero? Can I decrease 35? 20. It will be 25. That's your selection between 25 and 50. The first one that goes to zero is 25. So I can increase that value by 25. So this becomes 25. This becomes 25, that becomes 45, and this becomes 0. So what is my new solution? 
Let's see if you can tell me what new solution is. The new solution is 45, x14, 25, 30, remains 30, remains 10, this becomes 0. That remains 25. Yes. Now, something came in. Something is going out. What is going out? The one that became 0. This will go out. What would come in? X3, 4. X3, 4 will come in. And at how much? 25. So you don't bring the signs with you? No, the signs is for your That's for you to, know which one to know which one you're adding, which one you're subtracting. So what is the new value of Z? The new value of Z will be 1050. That line drew me Okay, so this is the new solution. <laughs> we will erase that. Okay, we will erase that. And everything is balanced. 30, 45, 25, 60, 50, 40, and 70. That is one iteration of transportation simplex algorithm. Again, it's a very simple process. It's a little tedious, but it's a very simple process. But these are steps. Now, you saw how much work this one did had. This is three by four. And when you deal with 10 by 10, you're dealing with a, a lot of things. You're dealing with a lot of things. That's why people have said, let's come up with a, some heuristics. Who can tell me the difference between an exact algorithm and a heuristic? An exact algorithm will find you a optimal solution. Okay, it might take ten steps, ten iteration, twelve iteration, whatever the number is required, but it will give you an optimal solution. A heuristic. Okay, it uses a good hunch. It uses a good hunch, and. Based on that, you can do something. For example, a good hunch in here was what? I looked at that and I said, oh God, there's, they didn't assign anything to the one that had the lowest cost. So that's probably a good selection. At least in this row, I can see there was a 25 or 25 in here and said, they have assigned to high hitters. These are 11 and $10. This is $2. But I thought you were signing that because they had the most. That's an exact algorithm. That's an exact algorithm. This is a heuristic. Okay. So you cut those calculations and you hope that you get a better answer. 
but if somebody tells you, is this optimal, uh, would I know? <laughs> I just went with a guess. Is it a good guess? Yeah, it makes sense. That's what heuristic is. Heuristic is a good hunch. A something with some insight into it. Okay. So, questions. Now, a couple of things that you might see. What happens if you go around this loop, whatever that loop is, and instead of one minimum that you find in there to take it to zero, you have the same numbers all somewhere. So if, if this was 25 and that was 25, what would you do? When you reduce them to zero, two of them become zero. Which one you would take out? Can't take out both of them. One of them has to become non-basic. So you arbitrarily select which one you want to make it non-basic. Now, um, could a could a loop look like this? Yes, it's a loop. It has all the conditions. So don't think that loops are just boxes. Can this be a loop? That's not a loop. Why not? Because, because <laughs> that dot in the middle is supposed to go from end to end. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. Bam. Because you have to go in a different direction. From here to here. Ho ho. Yeah. This additional one in here is? Not necessary. Not necessary. Oh, snap. Okay. Should we wrap it up or before or you have a question? Ask question if you yes sir. Uh well, when we got the chance to fix the Zibai, what if we say we have to or some said how to That's a very good question. Who can answer? No, he says after, after this. Now this, oh, okay. the question is, the question is, is this solution optimal? That's what he is asking. We started with, is this optimal? Then we start with that. We said, is this optimal? And then what did we do? We did all that calculation and all this calculation, and we said, no, it's not optimal. But before that, can we say that? You have to do this. Every time you have to do this, you have to do the calculation for UIs and VJs. Oh, so now and of course, those of you who are always looking for excuses, you say, but we have already done that. <laughs> so, and we, we say, we had to do it again in order to determine how to model it. Yes. Okay. Remember I said this is a long and tedious process. Gotcha. I know you were there. I'm just trying oh, to okay.
the u plus b minus c. Do we want the solution to be greater than or less than zero of the minimization problem? So these, these things you're looking at or these things you're looking at? The red ones. Okay. Well, we don't know what they are. We do the calculation, and just like the tableau, we have the tableau. If it is a minimization problem, we look at the zero. These are like zero values for non-basic variables. We look at the zero for non-basic, and you say, oh, what, is, is there a positive number in here or not? If there is a positive, this tableau is not optimal. This solution is not optimal. Which one, which one should I select? The most positive. And that's what we do in here. Okay. Okay. So the only thing we would change here would just be like one of the greatest, yeah. right? Our non-basic became a basic, and a, so that like B two would become a B four that we solve for that. Three yeah. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, you can you can find the ways that you can do this easier and all those things, whatever you like. Um, something which will go out was this one, x32. So u32 will now change to u34. So this is going to be 4. OK. And that is equal to 2. Will only one of these numbers change? No. No. More, more than one. But that's, that's the procedure. That's the procedure, and then you do. So the question, is it optimal? I don't know. I have to do this calculation. And if there is something positive in there, I say, it's not. And then I do another loop to see what is coming, what is leaving. And I repeat these steps until I get to the point that when I do these calculations, everything happens to be either zero or negative. In here? In here? This, put, this loop is very easy. That's the loop. Yeah. But. If, if you select that, that's your starting point. If you select that. If you select, if you select this, what, where does this selection come from? From this. You do the calculation, it will tell you which one to select. If we select that, you go oh, well. okay